Hey, Mark meets Steve Henry. Steve needs no introduction. Hi, Steve. Hello. Um, can you give us a very quick summary of your career to date? I thought you said I didn't need an introduction. <laughs> quick summary, yes. Yeah, so I set up an agency, uh, right, I worked at GGT, worked at WCRS, set up my own agency, HHCL. Uh, that got Agency of the Decade in the 90s, then worked at TBWA for a couple of years, been working at Albion as a non-exec creative director, set up a company called Decoded, which teaches people code. That's probably that's a rush through it all, right. most of it. Very good, 35 second career, brilliant. <laughs> um, what's the best bit of a career advice you've ever had? Uh, be difficult and fight for good work because good work doesn't happen by itself. Uh, most things in the industry conspire to stop great work happening. I mean, there's just a lot of things that get in the way of great work. So I think you've got to be awkward, you've got to be difficult, you've got to be obstinate, and you've got to fight for, fight for the great ideas. Okay. Um, how would you describe the creative industry today in three words? What, three adjectives or <laughs> how have you any got? three any words, yeah? Yeah. Uh, we, the advertising creative industry, the creative, yeah, tired, bankrupt, uh, no idea. No idea means at the kind of lowest point, yeah? So I think that stuff kind of goes like that, yeah? And I think we're going through this low point where there's no respect for creativity. But I think it'll come back. So I think a lot of people who are doing startups now, I think a lot of the, the kind of more energised people in the industry are looking at it and going, you know, we really need to get creativity back. We've got to put some energy into it. And how would you describe the industry in three words when you first entered it? Uh, fun, drunk, um, crazy. <laughs> okay, so a bit more positive. Yeah. <laughs> but maybe that's just, you know, nostalgia or hindsight or something, I don't know, yeah. If you could turn back time uh, on your career, what would you do differently? Uh, God, it's such a difficult... I don't know, really. So that sounds really arrogant to say nothing. But, I mean, <laughs> um, probably lots of things, lots of things. Um, oh, I'll tell you, no, I tell you, I wouldn't... Yeah, of course. I wouldn't have sold the agency. wouldn't have sold my agency. Um, uh, it was so much fun, HHCL, when it was really going strong in the 90s. It was just like everyone wanted to work there. We were breaking all the rules. All the work we were doing was like the stuff people were talking about. And that was just great fun. Do you know what I mean? So I wouldn't sell it. I'd hang on to it. Definitely, definitely, definitely. That was a disaster selling it. Disaster. Would you still like to see HHCL around today? And see yeah. how it would have changed and developed with technology and digital? Well, we were always kind of ahead of the game on that anyway. I mean, you know, we like we were giving people uh, tuition and all that. We were bringing people in from strange backgrounds, different backgrounds. We were, I mean, the whole thing about HHCL was if it's new, do it. If it's different, do it. You know, that was our whole philosophy. Um, that's what made it interesting, do you know what I mean? So, yeah, I think I really wish it was still around. Really, really wish it was still around, yeah. And then you get a nice big, uh, nice big check from WPP or Omnicom uh, or someone who wants to buy it from you. Well, I'd have to give back the check I got there. <laughs> you see, that's the only drawback. But I would, I'd give that back to get it back. Yeah. It? it was just. I think a lot of people will say that if you have a good agency, it's like it's so much fun. The best advice I'd give anybody is start your own place. Yeah. And the next advice is don't don't sell it. I mean, it's tempting to sell it, you know, but 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 don't. My mother didn't, you know, Robert keeps mother independent, Wines is independent, that's why they're such great agencies, you know. But money talks, there's got to be a certain amount of time until the right money leaves you with no other decision. Well, I don't think so. I think if you do what you want to do, you know, you can make enough money. I mean, it's not like the people at the top of mother are, you know, are poor, do you know what I mean? They're like they pay themselves properly. But they, they've got that independence. And when you've got that independence, it means you can fight for work. It means you can say that actually this idea is more important to us than the money coming in from that client. Whereas if you're owned by one of the networks, you can't do that. You can't say that. You have to work with clients. And that's why, you know, it's in campaign yesterday. The relationship between agencies and clients has never been worse, right? That's what it said in campaign. It's something like 
clients or agencies just don't get on and it's just and the problem clients are saying this is where it starts getting interesting or ironic or something is that what they want is more creativity more innovation but agencies aren't have lost the ability to, to kind of understand that to cherish creativity is that because it costs them too much and there's not enough profit in in the kind of R&D side um, no I don't think it's about the, I don't think it's about the cost of developing it I think it's that what I said earlier, you know, to get great work through, you have to fight and you have to be obstinate. Do you know what I mean? Great work, you see, there's a myth about great creative ideas that they're like the kind of Virgin Mary and they appear in the meeting and there's nothing wrong with them and everyone goes, wow, that's great, right? Never, never, ever happens, yeah? All the great ideas have a million things wrong with them, right? That's what makes them interesting, makes them spiky, makes them different, makes you get that kind of God. How did they get that through? How did they do that? Uh, so all the stuff that's wrong with ideas is the most interesting stuff. But that makes it very difficult to sell it, makes it very difficult to get it through approval processes and research and all the rest of it. And that's the thing where agencies, 95% of them, give up and they just, they're more interested in taking the money from the client and going, that's great, we've got the money coming from the client. Which is very short term because Agencies, on average, have accounts for less than three years. Do you know what I mean? Because they do average work, doesn't work, so the account moves. So they'd be better off fighting for great work. What's your uh, What's your favourite piece of advertising of all time? Sorry, that I did or anybody did. Or... <laughs> uh, do you know? I'm interested to hear both what both. you did and what someone else did. I think that. From the best that, that I was involved in was the launch of First Direct, uh, which, you know, banks are, do shit advertising, I mean really shit advertising. This was the launch of a new bank. We had like a minuscule budget, but we had a brilliant client who just wanted brave work. And so the idea was to produce work that kind of polarised people. We wanted to produce work that people would look at it and go, shit, a bank doing that? So we had all sorts of interesting things. We had an ad that broke into another ad from the future. We had ads appearing on two channels, one positive about the bank, one negative about the bank. <clears throat> we had about 80, 10 second ads that were kind of really odd and crazy. And um, that was just so much fun. I mean, that was, just, that was the most fun I think I've ever had in advertising because we were building a brand around the idea that early adopters, so this brand was for early adopters. This was for people who were kind of who would love the fact that other people hated the advertising, yeah? So great creative work always polarises people, you know? Like some people hate it, some people love it. Um, from other people, I don't know, Cadbury Gorilla, Sony, Bulls, Widens, uh, you know, Honda Cog. Those are the kind of obvious suspects. I mean, there's been lots and lots of brilliant stuff, yeah. If you weren't in this industry, what do you think you'd be doing? Uh, I, don't know. <laughs> uh, I had worked a bit in um, writing, publishing, a bit in the TV industry, but I really like, I mean this industry is full of very bright people and it's a really interesting industry because it's where business meets creativity and that, you know, that makes it, you know, yeah. tough, difficult, but very, very interesting. Um, I don't know, I'd, probably, I'd be a writer, I think. I, I just love writing, actually. And what are your interests outside of work, outside of, uh, outside of being creative? Uh, no, I hell of a lot. I, don't, I mean, probably the same as everybody puts... I mean, you're a, you're a recruitment person. You see the same thing on everybody's CV, don't you? Like this sort of cinema, theatre, yoga, yeah? Yeah. That's the sort of stuff, yeah. <laughs> so yoga? Yoga? Yeah? Yeah, I do see yoga. I do, I'm, I'm more into just going to the gym now. But I should get back into yoga, yeah, or Pilates, yeah. But I, mean, I go to the gym three times a week, yeah. It's good, you have to do something like that. Um, if you could work for any agency on the planet right now, who would it be? Uh, Wyden. I, think, I mean, I love, I mean, I met Dan Wyden once, just genius, genius guy. And I think they've got, you know, they've got principles. So, 
I read someone tell me he's worked there. They said they've got a principle that you know they only present work if it's ready. Yeah. So if the client says, "Come to the meeting on Tuesday," they'll say sure. Yeah. And but if they don't feel the work's ready, they'll turn up for the meeting without any work. Yeah. And the client will say, "Why are we here without any work?" And the agency says, "Well, you you wanted the meeting. You know, we're here." And I think that's the right attitude to put the work first. But that's so rare, so rare. Who inspires you creatively today? Is it still the same person from years ago, or is it is it kind of changed? Uh, yeah, you mean outside the industry? Yeah, either in the industry or outside the industry. Um, Are there writers or great creatives that that, that particularly inspire you, or artists, musicians? It's more like it's a it's an attitude. Do you know what I mean? To me, there's an attitude which is. People who want to break the rules, who want to be perverse, who, just for its own sake, do you know what I mean? Who just, if the rules are like this, they want to be over here somewhere different. And I think a lot of great creative artists have that. And that's what I plug into, that's what I love. But you see that in, you know, you see that in painters, you see that in musicians, you see that in dramatists, you see that in poets, you see that. I mean, it's, you see, the filmmakers. What I hate is that, is the opposite of that, is, is people just, doing the same thing as everybody else. You know, and, and that's that it's worst in advertising. So, you know, all shampoo ads look the same, all car ads look the same, all bank ads look the same. Do you know what I mean? That's what I don't like about the creativity in our industry. What's the most outrageous thing that, that you've done in your career or you've been involved in um, where you've taken a step back and gone, oh my God, this, this industry is, 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 is mental? Well, we did a lot of that. At HHCL, we just, we had a, I mean, I guess the thing that people always used to ask about HHCL, because we always did this weird stuff, and they'd say, well, you know, was there ever a time it didn't work, yeah? And the only example I can think of, this was in 15 years, right, was we did an ad for Pepe Jeans, um, and we used Keith Allen, Lily Allen's dad, to direct him although he'd never directed anything before. We were always just trying, you know, we were always looking for like, so we gave Frank Budgeon his first break, we gave John Glazer his first break. So we were always looking to, to break new people. And we got Keith Allen to shoot a film which basically showed a bunch of kids just laughing for 50 seconds on Tutti Common, yeah? And the end line came up, uh, Pepe Jeans, because one day you'll die, right? And that was the act. And um, it was, you know, it, you know, I think it was probably ahead of its time, you know. I mean, it kind of, it got, um, it, uh, I don't think it got the response we wanted, you know. I mean, it, but um, but I, I still think it was an interesting piece of work. So, you know, if you could find it on YouTube or something, it's an interesting piece of work. I've heard stories that <clears throat> years ago people, uh, if they want to pitch, fly out to France for lunch and come back or outrageous oh. stuff like that. Have, have you got any particular stories that, that you, you've done things that, wow, that's, that's outrageous? No, I think I sort of slightly missed that. Yeah, I got in just too late for that, really. Although, uh, we still had a bit of it. So at HHCL, we, for our 10th birthday, we flew everybody out to Monte Carlo for the weekend. For, I think, our 7th birthday, we flew the agency out to Amsterdam. I mean, it's not a particularly unusual thing to do. I think that the... What was interesting was we flew the agency out in the morning and we said that there's a big party tonight, so, you know, don't get stoned in the day, <laughs> yeah? And of course, everybody got stoned in the day, which made it a very, it made it a great party. So that was great. I mean, you know, it's good that people ignored what we said. Okay, let's move on. Actually, before we move on to a quick fire round, I just want to ask you about your current venture. So you decoded. Um, yeah. Can you just give us a quick summary of decoded and, and, and how it came about? Yeah, I mean, I because right. So decoding teaches people code in a day, right? I mean, I I'm not a techie, right? But I get really pissed off if I feel like I'm being excluded from something. I feel like if people are going, look, you don't understand this, or keep out, or this isn't for you, that always kind of pisses me off. Um, I mean, when I started advertising, working for Dave Trot, he took me on a shoot, showed me how it worked, you know, showed me like the cameras and the lights and all that kind of stuff, and and the people there so that I understood how TV worked. Now, I mean, the internet is just the most incredible tool for commercial creative communications ever invented. 
but there's only about 3% of people in advertising who can write on it, who can create on it. And so that was it. I was talking to a friend one evening and we said, like, well, we really should teach people code. And then it was like, if you're going to do it in advertising, no one's got any time, so we've got to do it in a day. And it took us eight months to develop this course that over a day. So ten people, we, we take in ten people at a time, two trainers, it's in a really nice space. It's very relaxed because, um, you know, there's so much stress around this. Everyone feels stressed about digital. And so in that day, we take people through the history of the web, the three languages that they need. In the afternoon, everyone sits down on a, on a MacBook and creates a multi-platform app. So everyone gets to make this stuff. It's very hands-on. Um, we get amazing testimonials. So, how long has it been going now? It's been going. We soft launched it in September, October last year, and um, so it's been going eight months or something, and it's going really, really well. It's going really well. Good. Let's move on to a quick fire round then. Can line or DNA D pencil? Can. Olympic gold or an Oscar? Oscar. The brightest person that you've worked with? Adam Lurie, who was the L in HHCL, he was the planner. Most creative person you've worked with? Tony Kay, the director. The best looking person you've worked with? Wow, that's difficult. There have um, been so many. <laughs> well, actually, yeah. advertising is full of quite good looking people. Um, I think I've got to pass on that. I think if I say one, Personally, it'll piss off other people. <laughs> okay. Um, creatives or suits? Creatives. Money or happiness? Happiness. Apple or Android? Uh, ooh, Apple, just. Degree or no degree? Degree. Art directors or copywriters? Copywriters. Retained work or pitch work? Uh, that's tricky, pitch work. Web or mobile? Ah, it's going to be mobile. Independent agencies or networked agencies? Independent agencies. Outsourced production or on-site production? Ah, uh, outsourced. Don Draper or Roger Sterling? Don Draper. <laughs> and lastly, twist or stick? Twist. Thank Keep you. Keep moving. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.